and Corey here to call round number four as we head into our historic rounds. Oh, Maria, never change. <laughs> I love you so much. Yes, we are indeed going to see many birds of flapping and squawks happening as we have an Arclight Phoenix battle up against the Lesnia humans. I'm Amy Loney alongside Corey Baumeister, and my friend, I must know, who do you like for this matchup? Well, I definitely don't like uh, Maria's bird sounds. I'll tell you that. That was uh, pretty scary right there. But uh, as far as the matchup goes, I'm really a big fan of this Celestia aggro deck. You know, I, I think Cedric said it, you know, really well. There's only six pieces of removal in Marcio's game one configuration. That's going to spell some trouble here uh, for this game one, at least. Yeah, I think for the most part, the... The game one for Marcia Cavalio's side of things with the Phoenix, you know, you're just trying to do your thing. You're not really mm -hmm. caring too much about what's going on. But on the other side of things, Simon Nielsen's pesky little critters in Esper Sentinel and Talia, they're going to hamper what Carvalho is trying to get done. So yeah, ideal start 100%. here. If he can find a Talia, turn two, he's golden. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, with this new addition of Ledger Shredder, which is an incredibly powerful card, you know, I've even mm. been hearing the blue Tarmogoyf, uh, you know, be brought up with this card. And and it, <laughs> when you put those kind of creatures into your deck, it makes it a little bit tougher. Like you have to take out something you have. So some removal spells have to go, um, which just makes the deck a little bit worse against traditional aggressive decks, even though we don't see a lot of them in the metagame right now. Sure, and I love this. Esper Sentinel gets a bit of a boost here from Talia's lieutenant. So now, if Marcio wants to not pay, he has to pay two. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this pesky critter gotten dealt with shortly here, as we have Unholy Heat and a Strangle at the ready here. Yeah, it looks like Simon likes his start as well. He is jamming down there. Yeah, I want to know <laughs> what he's listening to. <laughs> yeah. If he wins, hey Riley, if he wins, please uh, ask him what he's listening to. I'm always there curious. You go. <laughs> yeah, so we see two removal spells here, Strangle and Unholy Heat. Both can deal with Esper Sentinel, or do you just try to get down a creature here? I think I like that. Yeah, I'm a fan of this. Ledger Shredder, the sooner it gets down, the more it grows, or well, the quicker it can grow, and, you know, the more it connives, which is ideally what you're trying to do. You want to get these Arclight Phoenixes into the graveyard, and connive is an excellent new way to do that. So, mm -hmm. poor little Sprite Dragons kind of got the boot in this list, but, uh, you know, not too sad about it. Yeah, it really is Sprite Dragon kind of built into Ledger Shredder. It already kind of gets that big like Sprite Dragon, but it has that additional aspect to it, which just makes it such a strong card. Speaking of strong cards, that's a nice one. Yeah. Yeah, hi. Hi, what's up, Talia? And an attack here, too, as this 1-3 cannot kill either of these humans. So down to 14 goes Carvalho, and this is an excellent starter for Simon Nielsen in a deck that typically likes, well, not likes to, but it runs out of gas at a certain point. So yeah, yeah this 100%. is ideally what you want to be seeing here. 100%. And a quick reminder to these players, four win gets you into day two, and especially for Marcio Carvalho, who is in sixth place right now in the world championship race, you need to make it to the second day to have a chance at that world championship seat. So very important for Marcio. And Simon, we just saw, you know, in fourth place right now, looking great, but you definitely want to keep winning to solidify uh, that lead that you have above the other players. For sure. So Marcio has to deal with one of these threats. Talia gets taken care of, and an unholy heat to take care of the Esper Sentinel. Being able to cast two spells in a turn, though, means that the Esper Sentinel doesn't get another draw, but the Ledger Shredder does get to connive. So there's the first birdie in the bin, and there is also the trigger for Dragon's Rage Channeler. So she is angry for the rest of the game while that graveyard is nice and full. Very angry indeed. And Thalia did some work here because Phoenix would have came back with that opt. So big mm -hmm. collected company here. Oh, that's a pretty good uh, find there off collected company. Two things found and Thalia's lieutenant gets to trigger the Adeline Resplendent Cathar. So an extra point of damage in there. Down to eight goes Marcio. And with two flutings and an opt, I think we might see some birdies. So let's hope that the Dragon's Rage Chandler can find a couple extra goodies here. Maybe an extra phoenix just to try and get himself back into this just to fend off against this onslaught that was a huge draw there Ailey, on holy heat and you see that four for four on the card letting you know that mm -hmm. delirium is online so being able to take out adeline here for one mana is going to be huge as well as bringing yeah. back one maybe two phoenixes here if we find another one 
Yeah, let's just see if the library behaves here. Ledger Shredder going to be doing its connive thing, getting nice and big and chunky. But as you mentioned, important to get that Adeline out of the way. But there's also a giant killer on the board which can tap down the Ledger Shredder. So it's going to be a bit of a tough situation here either way for Cavalio. He needs, he needs blockers. Yeah, absolutely. More removal there. There's a strangle. To be able to, yeah, this is going to be a nice turn. Marcio deciding to discard the two cards that isn't land and the two removal <laughs> spells, and now can fire both of these at Adeline and Giant Killer, um, which would be very, very yeah. strong here, and bring back a Phoenix, maybe block with that on the Giant Thalia's Lieutenant, and everything coming up great for Marcio here as far as game one goes. Yep. Top of the deck, very kind to him in terms of finding these cheap interactive spells, digging deeper into the library, getting some more stuff into the bin. And Unholy Heat is actually going to go towards Talia's lieutenant. Wow. So Adeline gets to hang out a second here. Okay, and then the strangle right. for the giant killer. <laughs> and no hand. <laughs> See, Simon does a nice, you know, thumbs down there because that is a huge attack. Dragon Rage Channeler <laughs> is not delirious anymore now that these creatures came back. That is one less type. So you kind of have to leave that mm -hmm. one back. And now Marcio just decides how aggressive can I get without, you know, uh, an, uh, an attack that would be lethal on the other side. Yeah. Ooh, Inquisitor Captain, a pretty nice draw here for Simon Nielsen and Bosaiju, yeah. who endures, will be the land for turn. So, yeah, let's go uh, getting some creatures out for free, huh? Yeah, this card's incredible. Just collected company that really never can miss. You know, I, I say yep. <laughs> almost never. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. wow. What a yoink off the top of the library there. And is that game? Is this enough? Yeah, we see this. That takes care of that. Adeline plus five, another token. Six. That's five, yeah. six. Plus the Esper Sentinel. Yeah. Wow. My Both goodness players. me. Both players were really operating at some really high efficiency <laughs> here. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, I'm pretty sure Marcia went through every possible possibility. Yeah. You know, how do I lose this? And it it was exactly that. Inquisitor and was... Captain finding, <laughs> finding the removal spell and an extra one drop. Unbelievable. Yeah, it had to be two creatures, a.k.a. Collected Company and Inquisitor Captain, that one mm -hmm. of them found a removal spell, but that wasn't even enough. Enough. You had to factor in one additional land and a one drop that had to be added on there. So, I yeah. mean, that is pretty tough to play around. Uh, but, you know, yeah. Marcio's probably going to be kicking himself just a little bit for maybe not leaving one back. But Marcio was really trying to play to a line that would just guarantee him the win next turn, not trying to give this Celestia aggro deck a chance to top mm -hmm. deck another company, another Inquisitor captain, and just try to shut the door. I mean, perhaps over committing a little bit in the attack there, also maybe kicking himself for not killing, ki killing the Adeline there. But yeah, I mean, yeah. if anyone wants to work out what the uh, possibility of that exact, exact situation happening, be my guest, because yeah, I probably yeah. would have been on the, all right, turn the dude sideways, go face train. Yep, exactly. And I want to bring some attention here to a sideboard card that we've seen in Magic's past before be pretty decent against, let's say, you know, mono blue flying style decks with Crawl Harpooner. But it is excellent against how these is it decks are configured now, aka just with Ledger Shredder being added. You just get to, if they play Ledger Shredder, you play Crawl Harpooner and kill it right away. That is <laughs> such a good exchange. And it's a card that you can find off company, off Inquisitor Captain that can yeah. deal with, you know, some really big creatures. So Crawl Harpooner is excellent in this post-board game. Oh, this little insect was an all-star in the Ravnica block, the most recent one, that is. Yes. You get it in draft, yeah, you're going to play that. You got to kill those <laughs> pigeons. And especially in these high-stakes matches like we have this weekend, you want to kill them all really quickly. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. I remember playing Mono Blue Aggro in Mythic Championship 1, and some players were playing that, <laughs> and it was not fun to play against daily, believe it or not. Oh, no, I can imagine it wouldn't be, so. <laughs> Serves you right for playing Mono Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Another dream start here with Esper Sentinel on yeah. the play. Esper Set, you know, normally these Phoenix decks are so good at dealing with other creature decks, and while that is still true in this matchup, 
if your creatures are Esper Sentinel and Thalia, it makes it a little bit more challenging. I do like this opening hand here for Simon Nielsen. Has the Esper Sentinel, ideally draws a two drop now, and then Ranger Captain of Eos, which is an awesome, awesome card in humans. Just being able to go and find a one drop and also shut off any shenanigans that there could possibly be on the other side of the table. So, mm -hmm. not only finding. Not only finding does. a one drop, you can find like Dauntless Bodyguard that protects yeah. a creature, or you can find Giant Killer, which is a removal spell outside of the more obvious cards mm. of just finding a lot of Esper Sentinels. So a really versatile card. Yeah, for sure. Lands are plenty here for Simon Nielsen, who's still <laughs> just having the best time of his life. I, I must know. I'm going to tweet him after this. Be like, what are you listening to, sir? Yeah. Look at him counting. That... He's mathing. He's like, yeah, this is fine. That really is Simon, pretty much all the time. A great dude to be around, absolutely. He looks like an absolute blast. <laughs> Dragon's Rage Chandler found here. Just the Arclight Phoenix and the Abraden Hand, also a Hall of the Storm Giants, to threaten a late game. But we have to get there first, as Carvalho is sitting, setting himself up nicely, and on the other side of things, Ranger Captain of Eos. It's going to go digging for a handy dandy one drop. Let's see what we find. Yeah, going for the killer? removal spell. Yeah, sure. That kills a whole of storm giants. <laughs> <laughs> with a lot of mana. With a ton of mana. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ward is the thing. Ranger Captain is <laughs> like, nah, I'm just going to sacrifice this. <laughs> you don't get to kill me. I kill myself. Goodbye. Off he goes. And now there we're going to see go. a hardcast Arclight Phoenix, which isn't something atypical of this deck. You know, if you have it in hand and you can't get it out the cutesy way, you know, casting three spells, and you're just going to yeah. jam it. Yeah, absolutely. And you're going to see that kind of mode of Arclight Phoenix happen a lot more in post-board games against a lot of things. You know, there's a lot more hate that comes in for the Phoenix matchups that usually involves Graveyard or Graveyard Disruption or the Is It Phoenix deck becomes more focused and has a lot more removal. So you don't chain together ops and considers as consistently. So you see them jammed a lot more often. Now, I have a question here. Knowing that this is a post-sideboard game, knowing that there is a negate and an Archmage's Charm that could possibly mm -hmm. come in, is there any reason why we didn't cost the Collector Company before yeah, the untap? I, I, I was kind of looking at the sideboard to think the same, like maybe that's a little bit of a risky play, but bringing in negate against a deck that only has four Collected Companies and one mm -hmm. Giant Killer as the only spells is just too loose to do. The Archmage's okay. Charm is pretty decent, so I think this is a calculated risk where Simon's like, you might have one card, and of course that would be punishing, but instead Simon wants to wait until let's say combat for Marcio mm -hmm. to really have a big picture of how many attackers you have to deal with. And maybe if Marcio decides to attack with a Dragon Rage Channeler without it being delirious, you might be mm -hmm. able to, you know, just ambush block it Sniper. if you get any yeah. creatures. I don't think Marcio is going to attack with it for what it's worth, because it's pretty telegraphed here for this collected company, <laughs> but you never know. My, my, four open mana, whatever could you have? Is that yeah, you, you wandering <laughs> emperor? <laughs> yeah. Let's see if we can get a crawl harpooner. <laughs> that would be <laughs> awesome. No. Actually, this is all right. That's pretty big. Adeline just has yes. to be the best card right here, especially oh, yeah. now with those unholy heats not Oof. being delirious. Oof. I mean, you have, to, you, yeah, you have to get delirious real quick to deal with that card. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Dawnless Bodyguard to protect Adeline from any unholy heat shenanigans is just chef's kiss at this point. Yeah, no kidding. If there was an advantage bar, it would be well in favor of Simon Nielsen to lock up a day two berth already just four rounds into the tournament. You know that's got to be exactly <laughs> what Simon wants. Oh, heck yeah. And adding to his points for the World Championship qualifiers, you know, that's yes. just going to be cherry on top here. So... I like the line here of going Dauntless Bodyguard, let's protect Adeline, let's get smack and get some more dudes on the battlefield, because that's going to pump Talia's lieutenant up as well each time a, a, mm -hmm. a human enters the battlefield. So, yeah, and then just collect a company. Oh, my gosh, this is gross, and I love it. I'm here for it. Yeah, Adeline and Thalia's lieutenant is one heck of a combination. <gasps> oh, my. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's beautiful. Crawl Harpooner, oh. Esper Sentinel. Marcio, here, deal with these guys. Or as I like to say, catch. <laughs> catch, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the only problem is Crawl Harpooner does not have the, you know, the the type of human attached to it. But you know what? I think uh, Simon will be okay. Yeah, it doesn't even decide to kill Arc Light. I like, I like it, yeah. that decision. Yeah, he's not going to smack it. He's just sitting there being like, yeah, come at me, bro. 
what you got? Not yeah, a whole and, lot at this point. <laughs> and you might think why Simon decided to not kill Arclight. One of the few ways that Marcio could get back into it is by casting, let's say, three removal spells on three creatures and then getting back a Phoenix anyways. And then you just kind of mm -hmm. gave away an attacker for no reason. So really heads up play there from Simon to not do that. Yeah, now this is looking excellent here for Simon Nielsen. Whoa, down to five goes Marcio Caravaglio. He is in a bit of a pickle. He's got two unholy heats to his name right now. This is going to be a big draw for him. Do or die time. Yep. I love this. Before the draw, unholy heats, Dragon's Rage Channelers can help scry to something meaningful. Or surveil, as it were. So let's see what he can find here. Yep, being able to, uh, you know, manipulate your draws a little bit here mm -hmm. to be able to try to find something, but you got to even think just what is Marcio's best draw right now? I, I, don't, I don't see anything that just cleanly gets him back into it. He's left him opt on top, and, you know, it's kind of at the point where he doesn't want these Dragon's Rage channelers to become delirious because unless he can cleanly get a win here, like just find the gas and go, mm -hmm. you need blockers. But I think even then, I don't know if he's got enough. I think the outs is just putting two Arclight Phoenixes into the graveyard and having Delirium for Dragon Rage Channeler mm -hmm. to be able to deal 15 points of damage because even just one more Arclight Phoenix and getting Delirium, which is already kind of a tall order to ask, is still mm -hmm. just 12, leaving Simon at um, one here. So it's gonna it's gonna take a lot of luck. Alrighty. Expressive iterations, taking a look at three cards, one in the hand, one in exile, and one goes back to the bin, or back to the library. There's an unholy heat. Still no delirium, though, but can take care of one of these creatures on the battlefield. Yeah, and now we see, we might see Marcio move to second main phase and then fire off this unholy mm. heat, just to make sure he isn't forced to attack if you do want to put uh, something into the graveyard that gives you delirium. Yeah, and I don't think he had any other phoenixes going to the graveyard, so he's going to pass through yeah. combat here, like you mentioned. Make sure these DRCs can hang back and block, and then he's going to go for the unholy heat. Oh, he's risking it for the biscuit here. He's looking for one more card type to get into the bin. There's Needs the land. It. Needs it. Man, this is tense. <laughs> yeah, and I even if it's there... Marcio is still in just such a rough spot. Ugh. But if it's not there, the old you don't have enough to even kill the creature is just got to be Simon. Like, okay, well, this game is over. Yep. It is certainly looking like that, as now Inquisitor Captain is going to do more shenanigans. And this time, I'm pretty sure this birdie is eating dirt, as there's just two Dragon's Rage Channelers to block this onslaught of humans. There's going to be an extra creature being created here. Gotta block the two biggest things, but that's enough damage with the little idiots coming on through. So, yeah, that's gonna be all she wrote. Unbelievable stuff here from Simon Nielsen. Yeah, not a bad start. Exactly what you want to be doing <laughs> is beating the Is It deck, which everyone kind of anticipated being the most popular deck. Simon's got to be liking his chances pretty clearly. On, Corey. Liking his we chances. We gotta jam here. with him. <laughs> Everybody jam now. I don't care what you're doing, but you gotta jam. Yeah, Everybody that makes jam sense. with Simon Nielsen. That makes sense. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes to dance alone, you know? <laughs> oh, man, I love it. You can see how much that meant to him. What an excellent win there.